Welcome back to my Service Mesh video series. In my previous video, I discussed why you need Service Mesh and described its architecture briefly. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can apply the security features of Service Mesh to your applications. In your production environment, you probably have a firewall and authentication authorization mechanisms to protect your applications from requests originating from the outside. But what about security among services from within? In here, each service can access other services. We can provide security to your services within by using service mesh security features. They include, firstly, it provides identity and certificate management if you are using mutual TLS. Secondly, it provides authentication, both peer authentication and request authentication. In this video, we are concentrating on peer authentication. And thirdly, it provides authorization. It provides mesh, namespace, and workload-wide access control for your workload in the mesh. Now, let's have a look at what your application has to do if it is not using service mesh. If you decided to use mutual uh, TLS in your applications, you need your developers to actually program that in your application. As you know, this is not related to any business logic of your uh, application, but the developer has to do it as well. That may delay the development life cycle. Contrast that to applications using Surface Mesh. In here, you dedicate that task to the Envoy sidecar container. Also, you have uh, total control on who can access whom in here. For example, post, uh, service A can communicate with uh, service B and B with C, but you can make it such that service A cannot communicate directly with uh, service C. Now, now let's have a look at what you can expect from the demo. In order to make it easy to understand, I'm not going to introduce too many new things all at once. I'm only going to introduce three CLDs or uh, custom resource definitions which provide the policies to control security. They are destination rule which configures how an Envoy proxy sends origin requests. Peer authentication, which configures the policies for receiving requests. And authorization policy, which supports custom, delay, and allow actions for access control. You will see all these CLDs in action in the demo. And this is the demo environment. There are three projects. SM MTLS1 consists of a simple echo service. You send it a text message, it echoes it back and modified. I'm too lazy to actually write such an application in Java or any other programming language. Instead, I implemented the echo service using the netcat Linux command. SM MTLS2 consists of two echo services. When you send them a text message, one will send the message back with all spaces replaced by hashes, and another one with asterisks. And the third project is NOSC app. NOSC stands for uh, No Sidecar app. It has one echo service. When you send it a text message, it replaces all the spaces with hyphens. All the three projects are in the service mesh. 
by adding them to the SMMR or Service Mesh member role, which you will see in the demo. I do this so that I do not have to introduce additional concepts, including Service Mesh ingress, egress, virtual service, etc. They will be covered in subsequent videos. The echo service in the uh, low sidecar app project does not have an Envoy sidecar, unlike the ones in the other projects. The reason for that will be obvious in the demo itself. So enough talk, let's have a look at the demo. I created a shell script to walk you through the demo. You can run the same script to reproduce the demo if you want to. Let's get started. Let me run the script. I'm going to set up three projects with echo services. Two projects with their services injected with an Envoy sidecar and one without. For service mesh to auto inject the Envoy sidecar, the project must be included in the service mesh via the SMMR or service mesh service role. Let me show you one of the ways to do this. I'm making use of the service mesh member role to include the po three projects I created. Of course, there are other ways to do this, and I shall be talking more about that when I talk about how to set up service mesh in subsequent videos. Now, let us have a look at uh, the YAML file. Before I do that, let me just tell you a little bit about Envoy. Envoy uses the service account associated with this microservice deployment to generate an X.509 based crypto cryptographic identity. Red Hat recommends creating a service account for each microservice such that each service will have its own certificate and private key. Now let us have a look at the YAML itself. At the start I create a service account and then I associate the service account in the deployment. Also note that I use the annotation sidecar.istio.io slash inject true to ask for an auto injection of Envoy sidecar. I'm creating these projects. It may take a little while to uh, set up everything. And before I move on, let me just show you the one of the certificates created by the Envoy sidecar. You can actually retrieve that from the Envoy itself. Now, let us have a look. This is the certificate for the echo service. You can see that the identity is associated with the service account. Cluster.local namespace SM MTLS1 project service account echo. Next, I'm going to use the peer authentication CLD to set the MTLS mode globally to permissive in the Istio system project, which is the control plane of Surface Mesh, in my case. Let us show you the uh, YAML file. Permissive means that the services will accept both MTLS and clear text requests. In other words, services with and without the Envoy sidecar can call each other freely. Now I'm going to call every service from each service container. You will see that all calls are successful, whether clear text or MTLS are used for the request. Note also that each service responds with a slightly different message that was sent to it. 
Now let's get started. Now I'm in here, I'm calling from the port echo in project SMMTLS1. So it's going to call itself, going to call the two services in another project, and then call the hyphen process in a third project. You can see that the messages are slightly different. Calling from another port and so on. So they're all successful. Next, I'm going to use the authorization policy CLD to disallow one of the services in SMMTLS1 project from accessing the echo service in SMMTLS1. Let us have a look at the YAML itself. You can see that the rule is if the source is from principle that is the identity of uh, the service, it's, uh, the echo has service, then it will deny that particular request. Anything that does not meet this rule will be allowed. Let us have a look at the effect of this particular policy. Now I'm going to call every service from each service. So calling from echo is unaffected because that policy does not affect this particular uh, service. You can see that in here because I specifically uh, said that echo hash cannot access the uh, echo service in the MSM MTLS one project, so it cannot do that anymore. And all the other services have not been affected. Next, instead of disallowing just one service, now I want to disallow every service in the project SM MTLS two from calling the service echo in SNM, SM MTLS one. Again, I'm using the authorization policy, but this time instead of a principal, as I used previously, I'll use the lame space to include the project itself, SM MTLS two. So that means it delays calls from any services in SM MTLS two to access the uh, service echo in SM MTLS one. Let's deploy this policy. And now let's look at the result. First of all, it's not affected for the service echo. You can call any service as it wants. Echo hash in SM MTLS2 can no longer call echo in SM MTLS1. And again, echo S3 2 in SM MTLS2 cannot call echo. The others are unaffected. Next, let me use the P authentication CLD to set the MTLS mode for project SM MTLS2 to straight, meaning that the services in SM MTLS2 TLS2 can no longer accept clear text requests. Let us have a look at the YAML file. So I'm setting the MTLS mode to straight. Let's have a look at the effect. So the echo surface in SM MTLS1 is still unaffected. And the echo hash service cannot call echo service in SMMTLS1. That was a leftover from the previous uh, policy. And then the same here, leftover from previous policy. Now you can see that the uh, echo hyphen, that is uh, the one without sidecar, can no longer call uh, the echo hash 
surface and the echo S3 surface in SM MTLS. Next, I'm using the destination blue CLD to set the TLS mode to Istio Mutual for project SM MTLS 2, which means that its service always initiate requests using MTLS. Let's have a look at the YAML. TLS mode set to is still mutual. Now let us look at the effect. The echo surface un unaffected. You can see that the echo hash can no longer call the surface in project no sidecar app because it always uses MTLS and the uh, service in no sidecar app cannot do MTLS because it does not have any Envoy sidecar. The same for the second service in SM MTLS 2. So this beh behavior for echo hyphen in no sidecar app is the leftover from the previous policy, so it's unchanged. Next, I'm going to delete all of the policies I deployed except for the global permissive mode policy. The result is that each service can call all other services again. Let's confirm this. So, echo successfully call all other services. Same from echo hash, echo asterisk, and echo hyphen. I did not delete the three projects, just in case you want to explore the service mesh MTL as security some more when you are running the script yourself. And that is the end of this demo. In this video, I showed you how to secure your services with three CLDs, destination rule, peer authentication, and authorization policy. In the next video, I shall show you how to set up service mesh. Until then, stay safe and take care.